Good day, everybody. My name is Andrew Coots. I'm head of Intermediate Business at Santa. Thank you for joining us on this, our second uh, podcast in a podcast series that we hope to bring to you over the coming weeks, focusing on various topics that we hope that you will find interesting uh, and add value to yourselves and to your clients. As always, please share your feedback and give us your thoughts about what things will interest you and are important at this time. I have two guests with me today, Clint Hess, who's Head of Marketing at Suntum, and Gerald Van Veek, who's Head of our Business Development. And the topic we want to discuss is all about non-financial support uh, in these difficult times. Lots has been said about uh, discounts and premiums and policy rebates and extensions of cover, etc. But perhaps there's so much more that we can do as a collective uh, in sharing best practice internationally and locally and, and really imparting some ideas around how to be successful uh, and rebuild your business and be relevant uh, in these difficult times. I want to go straight into it and kick off with Clint. Uh, and Clint, first question to you, please. Firstly, welcome. Nice to have you on board. And, and the question is, what, what client communication strategies should brokers be adopting at this time? Hi, Andrew. Um, thanks. And uh, thanks for inviting me today. Andrew, I think it's no getting around the current situation. I mean, if you think about it, the stakes for client relationships has never been higher. No one knows what the market will, will happen and change from week to week, you know, let alone from hour to hour. So building client trust requires an entirely different focus. One of the key, three key things that I wanted to share with you today about potentially adopting to become a reliable and, and effective partner. First one is, can we be early to address a particular situation? The second concept is about being empathetic to your client's needs. And the third one is around being fearless to find solutions to their challenges. So if I step back, um, Andrew, you know, this concept of being early and anticipating your client's needs, you know, when I think is a basic principle when it comes to client service, you either early or unforgivably late. The reality is that our current situation won't be short. So to stay ahead of the curve, we need to plan against a series of milestones instead of focusing on one single open-ended challenge. So what I mean by that is we need to start to, to break a larger task into much more smaller bits. So whether it's into minutes or hours, the concept of days and weeks is something of the past. The other point is that, you know, we can wait for clients to panic in this particular situation and call us, or we can be proactive and call them first, identify potential issues they have and create a backup plan for that. This other concept of perfection is something we need to reconsider in this new world. You know, getting it half right is much better than being late without a strong point of view or an action plan. A, a characteristic I think that we need to really dial up in this particular time is being empathetic. Remember that everyone's situation is unique. When you're working with humans, it's all personal. And we should understand that tensions are high and deadlines are tight. And that we should consider what a client's most regional intentions are. So the little things matter. For example, one of the suggestions I would put out today is, you know, start um, and end every week by making five personal calls to your team and client. You know, lead every email that you put out with a good morning or a good afternoon and definitely pause, you know, at every call to ask, simply ask the other person, how are you doing? In these tough times, Andrew, humanity goes a long way. The other concept about being, being fearless, it might sound like quite a strong word, but it's really about being adopted in an experimental mindset. There's an old saying that you shouldn't let a good crisis go to waste. And it's helpful to keep that in mind in this current situation. Nothing bears more fruit now than the concept of embracing the 80-20 thinking. The idea that 80% of your impact can be created through 20% of your effort. So finding that 20% requires for our brokers, our intermediaries, experimenting with new technology and looking at new media platforms or creative communication strategy. And just finally, on your question, strong companies and partnerships are built on people. It's about being early, empathetic, and fearless to cut through uncertainty. This crisis, and represents a great opportunity to spend more time actively working um, with our clients and definitely less time talking about it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Fantastic insights. Uh, really good to have you on the call. 
Jared, I'd like to bring you in uh, on that topic, you know, and it talks about perhaps a different way of engaging. Do you think brokers need to adapt their business models going forward to be increasingly relevant? Yeah, thanks for having me, Andrew. And, and, and I most certainly do think um, brokers need to adapt their business models, specifically um, as it relates to becoming a go-to resource uh, for clients, you know, and all things risk advice related. I think the, the fast moving nature of this pandemic has obviously materially shifted the risk environment and, and how intermediaries adapt to this is becoming a key enabler for clients. And, and I think we're already seeing it play out in our business where on the one end you have a significant reduction in exposure with more clients working from home and traveling less. But on the other end, you have a significant increase in the risk exposure around things like theft and cyber crime, et cetera. And intermediaries business models simply have to adapt in order to facilitate these changes in risk. And secondly, I believe intermediaries would need to rethink how they are going to manage their relationships with clients going forward. You know, interactions via virtual platforms are becoming our new normal and, and face-to-face and telephone and email engagement simply won't be enough. And, and you would have to consider a more diverse or omni-channel strategy to communicate with clients. And ironically, Andrew, Clients are now comparing the experience of engaging with you with that of their bank, their motor dealer, their church, their kids' school, and everyone else that's engaging with them digitally. So, so the points made by Clint is, is very valid in this regard. And lastly, as intermediaries, we would need to adapt our new business acquisition strategies, You know, especially as we start rebuilding our economy. So I think it's all about adapting your business model to improve your resilience during these difficult times by focusing on diversifying your leads pipeline, and obviously retaining what you have, but also positioning yourself so that you can benefit from the eventual opportunities that I do believe could come post this pandemic. Julia, yeah, it makes good sense. I think also what I like coming through is the ability for advice to really differentiate our offering as an intermediate channel. Restructure your client's policy to keep it relevant, reduce premiums where you need to, increase them where you need to, and just make sure that the cover is always appropriate to the risk. That's something that the intermediate channel can certainly do better than any other competing channel out there. Maybe just along on that question, to bring in, you know, you mentioned about new models and, and technology obviously comes in as a big thing. What technology, if any, would you recommend becomes important now for a broker to invest in for their practice to be future fit? Yeah, thanks, Andrew. And I guess the pandemic and, and obviously the subsequent lockdown is, is obviously great to the shift towards the use of more digital channels. And so I would definitely recommend that you enable your practice digitally. But it also has to be with a focus on creating more efficiency, you know, in how you use your time and how you optimize your resources while still making sure you can deliver on your client service expectation and growing your business, obviously, with new clients. So whilst larger intermediaries can invest in their own digital tools and process automation capabilities, I would strongly recommend that you partner with an insurer that has a range of digital assets that you can leverage to enhance your own service model to your clients. So things like broker portals that allow you to remotely gain access to your entire portfolio and service your clients remotely, client portals and applications that could allow your clients to sell service at a time and a place most convenient to them, and even cost-effective platforms like a WhatsApp business account that can allow your clients to query and possibly in future transact with you and your teams working remotely. But obviously, all of this needs to be supported with the right infrastructure, so, so you have to consider things like hardware connectivity and obviously IT security going forward. So I do believe there's a range of technology enablement available to intermediaries that you don't necessarily have to invest in yourself. You just have to position and partner with the right type of insurer that will give you access to that range of digital assets to obviously then enhance your service experience back to your client. Makes lots of sense. Glenn, maybe if I can bring you back into this conversation. So let's assume that we you know, have access to or invest in our own and more digital platforms, uh, want to use social media, et cetera, to expand our reach. What recommendations would you have for brokers to drive lead generation and customer engagement, perhaps using some of these tools? Thanks for the question, Andrew. You know, we've seen over the last year a significant growth in the use of video, just broadly speaking, in terms of a way to engage with clients. You know, social media continues to grow, but the move is definitely away from the written word only into more visual um, client engagement. 
But we've definitely seen in the lockdown that there's been exponential growth in the use of digital tools and video is becoming particular and increasingly important for engagement. One of the key things is that brokers could definitely set up calls with prospective clients using video. People always want to see a face and as Gerald always reminds me, look at them in the eye on the other side. And so building a relationship is much more than just hearing someone's voice. And, and a good way to do that, you know, there's many tools available, but Zoom is an international platform and obviously Microsoft Teams, you know, engage with your clients in that way, invite a keynote speaker on relevant topics, and you can definitely offer some great advice and tips. Another strategy is definitely um, to provide value adding, you know, collected applicable news updates and tailor them to your specific clients to keep them well informed. In a world where we over communicated, I think part of our role is definitely to tailor our messages to our clients. Some of the other suggestions I've got, Andrew, for the people listening is if you don't have an online presence, you know, whether it's website or mobile site, Google My Business helps you set up a website and a mobile site for free. And they offer a series of free benefits, which includes how to market your business on that, how you can do virtual tours of your business. People want to see where you are, customize email addresses and also provide reviews from your customer. You know, word of mouth remains really critical. If you Google that, you'll find that platform. Another interesting resource I found over the last two weeks is a, is a link called I Think with Google. And really what they do is they um, create a package solution for local insights and inspiration for both business owners. And then lastly, let's not forget sometimes websites. You know, we've got a section on advice and tips for intermediaries on how to market your business as well as key industry trends. Just some key articles that I picked up again recently was, you know, five tips to grow your business with email marketing, how to use technology to grow your business, and lastly, making LinkedIn work uh, for your business, amongst others. So so we sometimes have, have a variety of resources that you can tap into, but let's not forget that sometimes the simple things, doing the, the basics right in these times can have a, a significant impact on your business growth. And don't forget about email marketing as a great channel. Thanks, Andrew. Clint, very valuable, uh, great insight, thank you. And just to advise all our, our brokers, we will be putting some written communication to support this podcast if you missed any of that detail uh, in Clint's feedback. And Gerald, maybe just the last question to you and then we'll wrap up. Obviously there's lots that's happening. Are we able as Santam to do or are we planning anything to help brokers specifically as we recover from the impact of COVID-19? What's on it from the Santam side? Well, firstly, Andrew, um, it's well worth noting that we've already committed more than 400 million in COVID-19 funding to provide relief through premium reductions, premium refunds, as well as direct support to the industry and other government initiatives. I mean, uh, 135 million of these funds have gone towards helping qualifying clients in financial distress during this lockdown period, whilst about 150 million were given back to clients as a 20% premium refund on their motor premiums. And this directly affected our intermediaries as it obviously provided them with an opportunity to retain their clients and where possible also their commission earnings. But we are looking beyond this for new ways uh, to further support our intermediaries. And as you know, we work very closely with the Financial Intermediaries Association of South Africa, the, the FIA. And just yesterday, I had an engagement with the FIA CEO, Lazelle van der Merwe. And we are exploring ways to promote the development and the evolution and recovery of the financial services sector post COVID-19. So going forward, we will continue to support our intermediaries by ensuring fair and equitable outcomes for clients, especially in the event of claims with a key focus on consistency and clear communication. And, and we are actively planning to enable our intermediaries further around a possible next phase of financial relief for our clients and intermediaries. And then we're looking specifically at expanding on the non-financial support for intermediaries through our technical marketing teams, as a way to empower them with key information around what we've discussed today, business model innovation ideas, client communication strategies and technology adaptation principles. But also, excitingly, we're looking into new products, you know, as a direct response to the changing risk landscape brought about by, by this pandemic, which will hopefully also translate into opportunities for brokers to re-engage their businesses and go and find new opportunities. We're looking into more competitive rating structures across many lines of our business. It's a firm commitment 
that we are open for business and we're ready to support our intermediaries to get going again under the new normal. And lastly, we will continue to invest and expand our digital assets and innovations that will ensure greater use of self-servicing capabilities on a 24-hour basis. It will ultimately be a complete digital insurance lifecycle over time. And that will immediately start lowering the cost to serve clients from an intermediary perspective. And that will hopefully delight our clients through the ease of doing business with us. And that will ultimately lead to greater affinity towards our intermediaries. And that will hopefully result in more new business and the retention of existing business. So lots on the go. And we're truly excited to be partnering with our intermediaries to bring these things to market. Jero, thank you very much. Uh, I think it's, I share your excitement about the opportunities that exist in tough times too. And the courage we need to do it, it's great to hear all the plans. Thank you for that. That brings the, the end of our second podcast series. To Clinton, Gerald, thank you again for sharing your insights. It's really valuable. And to all our intermediaries out there, just a big thank you again from Suntem for all you do for our business. Thank you for being relevant and thank you for being counted. Please share us your feedback. Uh, We will continue to drive the podcast going forward on topics that are relevant to you. So please let us know. We really value all you do. Keep safe out there and all the best. Thank you.